Shall I, shall I just give the camera a quick nudge? And I'm recording my screen. But do you want a bit more? So a shiny he... face. We're gonna just oh, yeah. shine it with a cushion. <laughs> Why don't you just go and make telly and do news and that? All right, let's do it. Hello and welcome to BBC R&D Explains, where we lift the lid on our big projects and chat directly to the people behind them. We've got a new and really interesting body of work to introduce you to called New Forms of Value. It's all about exploring what new data-driven services the BBC could provide in a way that adds value to people's lives. Here's what's coming up. In this episode, we'll meet Max and hear all about how personal data stores could give everyone control over their own data. In episode two, we'll catch up with Alex to see the augmented reality experiences he's been building. In episode three, we'll drop in with Leanne, who is offering an alternative approach for evaluating content. And finally, in episode four, we'll meet Ian, who's thinking about how the internet is built and what we could do to make it work better for society. Let's do it. So that's already a lot to unpack and explain, so let's jump right in with fellow BBC R&Der, Bill Thompson, who's leading this work. Hi Bill, new forms of value. First, what's the background to this work and what led us on to, to exploring this? Fundamentally, new forms of value ask the question, what could people love the BBC for as well as radio and television? In a world where so many of us are connected by the internet using powerful computers and laptops and mobile phones and all that sort of stuff. What else could the BBC do? Okay, so we've got lots of projects going on within that space. Can you tell us what are the main three areas that you're looking at? First, data. So how we use and store and look after people's data and data around the services. Then we're looking at human values the things that matter to people and how we can make sure that what the BBC offers reflects those values and, and is good for people, if you like. And then the third area is the network itself, the, the internet, and how to make sure that the internet as a, as a piece of technology is able to serve the BBC's public purposes. So that is an absolute huge body of work you're talking about, like literally every kind of oh, layer. Yes. A lot, a lot of work going on. So for the rest of this episode, we're going to dig into the personal data area of work. Can you tell me about what exactly this is and what's your approach to even start to explore this? At the heart of what we're doing is an exploration of a technology called a personal data store, which is a place that can hold the data about an individual securely and give them control over when and how it is used by other organisations, by third parties, by service providers, by government, by, by whoever. So Max Leonard is one of BBC R&D's project engineers and he's leading the work on personal data stores. And I caught up with him earlier to find out more about it. So with me now is Max Leonard. He's a project engineer here at BBC R&D and he's doing some work on personal data stores. Hi Max, thank you so much for sparing some of your time. Yeah, no worries, good to see you. Excellent. So tell us, what exactly is a personal data store and why are you exploring it? So as long as there's been kind of digital systems um, that have stored personal data, the usual way to do things has been to kind of, you know, collect it all and put it in a big database. So you have all the kind of personal data that might support your service in kind of one great big store. Now, there's, there's a number of problems with that. So say if you're on a social network and you want to add a friend from a different social network, well, you can't because that service is kind of welded to the, the kind of main data store of, of the service it kind of comes from. The other problem is, is things like data leaks and attacks and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And also, once you start looking into the kind of architecture of the way that a lot of these big systems are built, it starts to become very difficult technically to be able to kind of pull your data out and separate and then do all the useful things with it. So rather than having your data sort of spread out in the big data stores of all the various services that you use, what would it look like if you had a single store for all your personal data that these services could come in and access on a per sort of transaction basis um, and use and then essentially forget? And what that would effectively mean is, one, it would allow you to move your data around services without having to pull it out of one service and somehow port it to another. And it would also 
open up like innovation left, right, and center because now if you know someone wants to come along and create a new search engine or a new shopping system or a new social network, they don't have to amass the data with millions or billions of users beforehand to be able to provide and create a competing service. Now suddenly all you need to, in theory, all you need to be able to do as a consumer is plug your personal data store into that service and you're off. So at the BBC, we thought it would be a good idea to start looking at personal data stores and how we could build systems, services, and essentially deliver what the BBC does best in a more sort of ethically conscious and secure way that respects the privacy and agency of its audience. Fantastic. So I can just imagine the kind of things that would be possible if you have access to, you know, this wealth of data from multiple sources and link them together in new ways. So Max, the bulk of the work up until now has been building this personal data store platform. And one of the first services that you've built, you've been prototyped to kind of try it all out, is the Recommender. So can you tell us a bit about it? and uh, how exactly it looks to the audience. What does the, the audience get out of it? Sure, so basically what this is, is we have such a massive backlog of material in the BBC that stretches back like 100 years of audio and video content. And discovery and discovery of that content, especially, you know, we've got tons of stuff that's kind of rights cleared and we could make available to people, but just finding it is really difficult. So we thought, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be fun as a kind of first go at this stuff to be able to create a new recommender so the basic way this thing worked is it, it you sign up for it you log in with your bbc account like any bbc service like log into iplayer or whatever and you get a personal data store created for you in the background this personal data store is um yes it's running on our servers but corporately we can't access what what goes into it so you go through a process that then links your um uh, kind of existing media accounts. So that's it pulls in your BBC data and, and stuff from kind of your music streaming services and video streaming services. And then kind of gives you back a, a holistic media profile of the things you might like. So like the bands you might be interested in, et cetera, et cetera. Once you've, you've kind of edited that and you, know, because there might be things in there that you don't want to be in there. One of the problems with a lot of services at the moment that offer recommendations, it doesn't give you much chance to remove things that are affecting the algorithms in ways you don't want. So if you've, you know, I've got like two kids who watch cartoons all day and my iPlayer, um, my iPlayer recommendations are full of cartoons, right? It's really annoying. So just, yeah, same. yeah. so like little, little kind of tweaks like that that allow you to kind of edit this thing before it goes off to kind of recommend you stuff. We allow that and you hit go. And basically it takes that media profile and performs a whole bunch of searches on the, on the BBC's um, archive, sounds, iPlayer, sport, news, et cetera, and gives you back as a, it's such a list of tailored recommendations that are based on your BBC history, but are also based on the data you have amassed elsewhere in your kind of digital life. Um, and it's gone down, you know, very well. This is a very small internal prototype, I've got to say, you know, we're not going to be launching a service that does this um, anytime in the near future, but it proves the concept quite well. And we've been, with them, we've been... Um, coming up with all sorts of new concepts that could use this wealth of data we now have access to in, in completely new ways. So we've had thoughts on what we could do in the worlds of health and finance and, and kind of emotional well-being and all sorts of things related to the current coronavirus crisis and things that could help people there. So we've got this huge kind of raft of potential services we could build. And once we've kind of uh, finished with the, the recommender and we've kind of tested the the sort of architecture and the platform that supports this kind of services, we're going to go on to kind of prototype new new ideas. So absolutely fascinating, fantastic stuff. I'm really looking forward to, to seeing what comes out of it. Yeah. What is the best way for, for our viewers to keep on top of the work? Go to the R&D website, and there's plenty of posts on there, and on the R&D blog, in which we'll be writing about this work as you go through the project, and also when we have completed our trials of the first stage. <laughs> So, Bill, we've heard from Max, it all sounds great in theory, but does it work? Mostly. Uh, it's an experiment. Uh, there are bits of it that are really tricky. We, we found some things that are really quite hard, getting all the bits to fit together. But yes, it, it is working end to end to the point where we, we're confident we can start showing it to people and getting them to, to try it out and get some real research data from users really quite soon.
Well, that's it for this episode. As always, let us know what you think in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe. And tune in next time where we'll meet Alex Nelson and get a first look at some brand new AR experiences he's built, all with public service in mind.